Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our webinar, Importance of IoT Network Security and Challenges Ahead. I am Khaled and I will be your host for the day. Our speaker for the session, Mr. Mohammed Irshad Sefi, Global CEO and CIO and CDO, Director IT of Shardul Amarchand Mangaldas and Co. Please note that the session will be in the listen only mode and will last for about 40 minutes, out of which last 10 minutes will be dedicated to Q&A. Requesting all the participants to post your questions in the Q&A window. Should you need any assistance during the session, please use the chat box. Also, we do have two criteria for a certification. First, participants need to attend the complete webinar. Second, fill in the survey and the right answers to all the three questions based on the webinar, which will be sent to you one day post the webinar. About our speaker. Mr. Sefi is a C-level executive for over 20 years of global expertise in IT industry and also multiple industries like manufacturing, BFSI, pharmaceutical, healthcare, IT services and professional consulting firms. He helped 10, 100 and 500 companies to solve their complex business problems using technology. He is passionate about technology and believes in driving IT department with a strong ethics, governance, policies standards and processes with globally accepted frameworks. He has been constantly awarded, promoted in his previous organization and is an active speaker in public conferences and awarded by various prominent organizations. He is a board member of EC Council and National Committee member of FIKI for AI and Digital Transformation. Prior to joining Shardul Amarshan Mangaldas & Co, which is one of India's leading law firms, as Chief Information and Digital Officer, he has successfully led global leadership roles in large enterprises such as Citibank, Agilent Technologies, Genpact, HCL Technologies, Sun Pharma, and Havels. He holds the COBIT, ITIL, and PMP licenses and certification. I will now hand over the session to you, Mr. Sefi. Over to you. Thanks, Khaled. Thanks for the great introduction. Um, so thanks, everyone. Uh, let, me, let me start this conversation by saying thanks to the EC Council team for inviting me into this esteemed uh, conference that they are arranging today. Thank you so much for that. Um, and I would also like to thank all the audience uh, for sparing your time and coming on to attending this conference. I know uh, I was looking at some of the demographics of the uh, of the attendees that are joining this session. Uh, looks like some people are joining from all three continents, uh, be it US, Europe, and, and others in the Asia Pac. So thank you so much for that. For some, uh, this time around may, may be an early morning. For some, it could be a late night and then hence forth. So thanks for that. Uh, without any delay and respecting your time, let me start this presentation. So today I'm going to be uh, talking about um, and, and sharing my experience on the IoT. So we'll give you a quick brief of what is IoT, uh, what is the future looks like for IoT, um, and what are the relevant essentials or the security elements that we have when we talk about the IoT. In the end, I'm also going to be sharing a case study uh, which I have uh, I'll be sharing based on my ex my previous experience, and I'll be giving you a few tips as to how you can really go and build the secure IoT system in in, in some place. And I'll also be giving you a few tips. Uh, these are all generic tips based on my experience, uh, which I think are essential for you to be successful in the career. Thanks. All right, um, let me move on. Uh, move on with the IoT. Uh, as you may all be hearing a lot about IoT, Internet of Things, uh, this is kind of a buzzword. You may be hearing about autonomous cars, you may be hearing about uh, the connected factories, you may be hearing about uh, the variables that we are having. These are all connected to the internet, the smartphones. So uh, if you really go back to the definition of IoT, the definition I've just extracted from the Wikipedia, um, this looks very simple and, and modest. So it says that IoT basically is nothing but a network of physical objects. Uh, that is nothing but things and which are embedded with sensors, 
softwares and other technologies for the purpose of connecting and exchanging the data. So this is important. So one that IoT device connects and the other is it also goes and exchange the data. Why I'm, I'm emphasizing on these two words is because the moment something is getting connected onto the internet and they start sharing some data, that's where you would be able to easily relate this to the cybersecurity. Uh, and also it does uh, the data communication with the other devices and the systems over the internet. Um, there are a few examples. Um, and in the examples, if you look at, I think uh, in uh, these are the four categories that I have tried to create. And in the four categories, I have tried to summarize this into two. Uh, industrial and consumer. So let's talk about the consumer first. Uh, when we talk about the consumer IoT, this is uh, something that is touching to us directly in day-to-day -day life. Say, for example, the wearables, if we are wearing the smart watches, uh, if you are having the smartphones, if you are having the TVs, which are also connecting to internet, these are all the examples of internet of things. Similarly, at our home, um, we have we now have appliances which are IoT enabled. Those appliances are basically uh, going and sending all the data with respect to the availability of the appliance, with respect to the uh, usage pattern of the appliance, with respect to uh, how the appliance is behaving at at some point of time in in the whole day. So all of these data, it is generating and sending onto these servers. Uh, similarly, uh, the home monitoring systems have now started coming, which are also IoT enabled. Um, you have home automation systems, uh, which basically automate everything. So imagine if someone's home is completely automated with IoT, and what if that happens? So your entire privacy and everything goes for a task. So we'll discuss these things a little later. Um, if you talk about uh, split the coin to industrial, uh, in industrial we see uh, heavy machineries, uh, those are coming in with IoT enabled, the transportation system, uh, you may be hearing driverless cars, the autonomous cars, these are all the great examples of IoT. Smart cities, uh, in some parts of the world, those are already there. Uh, in the developing world, these are also getting created, which is going to be completely IoT-based uh, cities. So everything uh, will be just on the phone. Um, similarly, when you look at uh, the other part of the industrial, which is nothing but into the factories or plants, the all the connected machines are coming in, the automation systems are coming in, The if you look at the healthcare, um, all the uh, newer devices that are coming in, those are also going and generating a lot of data. You can go and control those uh, devices remotely. So, so there are a lot of a uh, lot of examples. These are just a few, but there are a lot of examples that we see today. Those are there uh, from uh, on the IoT space, be it the consumer or the industrial. And as the world is emerging, uh, the newer technologies are going on, and we have seen with pandemic, uh, this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the technology adoption has really gone up so high. So we'll see that uh, the IoT devices would also be adopting at a, at a very fast pace as you move forward. So even companies are, uh, the people are actually going and talking about connecting all the trees, um, connecting all the towers, uh, even the street lights, um, there are few cases uh, in UAE uh, that that I've seen uh, even the the plants that they are having uh, those have also started getting connected with the IoT so that uh, that gives a, a very nice way of uh, ensuring that uh, that device basically goes and tell how much water do you really need to put in on a particular day how, when does it need it when it doesn't need it so it is going and saving a lot of water for the country so we, we will see a lot of interesting cases uh, those are there and those will get emerged and there, there's going to be a tremendous value out of it all right the future of iot and its global growth uh, so the future of iot looks really phenomenal so uh, 
we are expecting uh, that there's a search done by uh, machina research uh, they're expecting that the iot revenue by 2025 is going to be 3 trillion so this really speaks a lot uh, 3 trillion is a big number uh, and then if you talk about the number of devices that we will be having connecting to iot we're expecting 25 billion by 2025 so in the next Five years from now, we are actually expecting 25 billion IoT devices worldwide. It's going to be a huge, huge number. And imagine the kind of complexity, the kind of challenges that it will all bring onto the entire world. Uh, if we look at the IoT market, this is all, again, uh, will be growing at a very fast pace. Uh, if you look at the trend, 17, 18, 19, 20, and then immediately, um, starting from 2021, I think it's going to be growing at a very fast pace. All right. Um, so if, if IoT is going to be such huge and if it is going to be so much important and will be integrated into our day-to-day -day life, we don't see security in IoT. We don't see um, anything rich in security in IoT. And I'll just give you a simple illustration of the IoT security here. Um, so as you see on the screen, uh, when we say IoT, it is Internet of Things, but there is no security here, and which which is what these these, these gentlemen are uh, are having the conversation. That do you know the S in IoT for security? They say no, there is no S in IoT, and the other gentleman says yes, exactly. That's my point. While S is not uh, there in front of it, but this is exactly inside into it and it has to go into it without having s in iot the iot would be meaningless so iot needs to be secured if we just put the internet of things put the autonomous systems put all of these uh, great technologies onto the planet and imagine if we are not securing them what uh, repercussions it may have Again, giving a very simple example, say if one, one's home is connected with all the IoT devices, and what if that home is not secure? So what impact it could have? If, what if some hacker gets onto your router, and then, uh, then he will be able to practically control everything. One, he will be able to monitor what all you are doing. Uh, he can actually go remotely shut down your front doors, he can shut down your washing machine, he can shut down your TVs, he can do whatever that he wants or she wants to do. So security has to be a very key element in, uh, in the IoT, and this has to be really taken very, very seriously. Um, these are some of the hacks that we all have seen uh, in, in the last couple of years. So while uh, IoT was at a very nascent stage, uh, people did not thought much about it, uh, but with these hacks, I think everybody has realized that IoT security needs to be taken very seriously. And we'll give you just one example that uh, if you talk about, say, Google Home, Alexa, Siri, uh, these are all of things that, that can be easily controlled or taken over, not by getting into those devices, but even by using the laser light. Um, so I'm sure you will be able to find out uh, that there are good illustration of this attack given in the YouTube as well. Maybe you can go spend some time, find out how these things can be done. But uh, all that I'm trying to say is that um, IoT hacks are not uh, not that difficult as well. Uh, similarly, you may, you may all have heard about Fox Weekend Vehicle Hacked via Wi-Fi spot feature. So it has a Wi-Fi spot feature, hotspot feature, and with that functionality, uh, the attackers could actually get onto the vehicle and, and they could hack this. Uh, some more examples, um, and these are all again popular examples that I'm, I'm throwing out to you so that you all can relate why security is so much important for IoT. Um, you may have heard about the OLED Wi Fi Baby Hut Monitor. That was an app which basically used to go and monitor the part of, uh, of the baby, and attackers actually got into this particular application, and then they were able to do a lot of bad things. Um, 
Then uh, in the healthcare industry, uh, this was also a big news that the ransomware attacked uh, one of the hospital, which actually resulted into the death of a patient. Um, Fitbit, we all, most of people uses that. Uh, it also allowed the spyware on official app store. So this was also a good research that was publicly available. Um, uh, the Jeep hack, you all may have heard it long time back, um, way back in 2015, the uh, I, <laughs> team of IBM could actually control the entire Jeep. Uh, they could really put Jeep off the road onto uh, from the highway, and they could actually go control the speed and everything what was possible. So these are just the same uh, simple and, and few examples here, but I'm sure when you navigate to the web, you will find out so many other hacks that have happened, are happening, and attackers are not leaving any stone unturned to not hack any of the, these emerging technologies. All right, let, let me move on. Um, uh, so let me give you a brief snapshot of what are the IoT ecosystem is, uh, give you some basics. Uh, so, and, and if, if I were to start the basics, so um, if you look at the IoT in principle, it has got three core elements. Uh, first, it has got the edge device, which is there at the bottom. Uh, these are nothing but these are really the IoT devices that we see in our day-to-day -day life. It could be washing machine, it could be um, smart TV, uh, it could be a sensor placed in any of the device at our home or, or in, in our locality. Um, so these are all the IoT devices. Ultimately, what they do is they go and connect to the gateway. Now, if we are at our home, the gateway is the router. If we are outside, there's some IoT device connected there. Uh, the gateway would be the respective gateway for that particular device. So the second element for the IoT ecosystem is the gateway. And third is really the cloud platform. So which is where uh, all of these devices, by using the gateway, they are going and sending all the data. Uh, again, taking back the example of, uh, say, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the machines, say, for example, if you are having at our home, if it is going and sending a lot of data, so that data by using the gateway, it will ultimately be going and storing onto the cloud. So uh, it could be Azure, it could be AWS. There are many more platforms that I've got created on IoT. So all of that will go and get stored. So these are the three key elements that, that are there in the IoT ecosystem. And once you understand it, uh, then it will be easy for you to uh, chalk down uh, as to how do we need to secure all of these three. So just securing IoT device would not solve your problem, just securing gateways would not solve the problem, or just securing the cloud platform would not solve the problem. So it has to be looked at holistically, um, all three components and the communication medium that we are having between all of these three, and all of them needs to be secured. Just uh, just to summarize, so these IoT devices are very small embedded systems at the bottom. Uh, they have got the firmwares, then routers are nothing but the gateways. They have got firmwares, typically Linux. Uh, so if it's if they have got some vulnerabilities, people can go hack them. Um, and then uh, therefore, it is important to vulnerability analysis on IoT devices. But how do you do that is a question. We will cover that later on. And then uh, what I described is the cloud platform. So if cloud platform is not configured correctly, that could also give you a lot of issues. Okay, um, so why, um, again, a few more insights as to why IoT network security. So like we have discussed in the previous slide, the device, no device is fully secure. So these are very small devices which really does not have the operating system like what we see in our machines or on phones. These are small devices with small RAM, small processing power. So it is very difficult to really find out how do we really secure it. So one, do we need to secure the firmware, then the communication that it is having, how do you ensure that uh, the communication it is having gets secured? So all of those challenges are there. Uh, so uh, that that's one. The other is the IoT security is currently limited. So uh, the IoT security is 
still evolving. There are a lot of a uh, lot of things that are taking place in this particular domain. Uh, a lot of technologies are getting implemented, and people are coming up with the newer uh, technologies to ensure that IoT gets secure. Um, the investments on security are limited in the IoT security space, but as we move forward, we will see that the investments would also be uh, going high. Uh, and the functionality before security is also limited at this point in time. Uh, but but the real physical threats are there uh, on health and safety safety because we are all using uh, all of these IoT devices in our personal lives these days. Um, this is basically IoT threat landscape. I'm not sure how much visible it is, but just to give you a quick uh, summary of it. So assuming that in the middle these are the threats, um, and then those threats are again further divided. So first is say physical attack. So somebody can actually go and physically attack uh, some of the IoT device. Say for example, uh, somebody can come come to your home, connect onto your Wi-Fi, um, just being a guest, and after that got onto your Wi-Fi and then try to access and control some of the devices. Or if you have um, say a LAN ports at your home or wherever those IoT devices are, somebody can actually go connect um, the PC onto the LAN port, scan all the open ports, scan the vulnerabilities, and get on to uh, destructing those IoT devices. Um, the other is, um, one is that these physical attacks, the other is uh, simply uh, once, once you have the access or once you know that these are the potential IoT devices that you want to target, uh, you can do various type of attacks. You can do DDoS, you can do many other things to create the outages. You can also go and uh, do, uh, I mean, uh, if, if the natural disaster happens, though that also becomes threat for IoT devices. Um, eavesdropping um, or, or uh, interception hacking, uh, that's also possible. Um, if, if the system fails or malfunction, that's also a threat to IoT devices. Um, if, if somebody is trying to spoof uh, ICMP flooding, uh, like I said, so DDoS, malware, um, th those are also the things that, that are possible to attack. Um, you can exploit the vulnerabilities, uh, counterfeit them, target attacks, modification of information if it is exchanging the data. Um, that information can be modified. Uh, the privacy can be compromised. Uh, once you get on to attacking those systems. All right, um, the, the next thing I want to discuss is the IoT security attacks and challenges. So uh, attacks possibilities, as we discussed, um, the attacks over the internet IoT ecosystem. So the sensors or the IoT devices, those, uh, those are also, those can be attacked. So for example, once you attack the sensor, you can actually go drain the entire battery of pacemakers. Uh, the communication, the communication is not just limited to the LAN or Wi-Fi Ethernet. Uh, it's also related to Bluetooth. Some devices connect to Bluetooth, so you can actually go intercept, or attackers can actually go and intercept the Bluetooth traffic. Uh, the data integrity is uh, is a big concern. Uh, if, if the data is being tampered along the way, that can also result into the entire decision making process uh, the information privacy uh, which is a simple example of the toy app that i was showing you uh, uh, this is uh, this basically eavesdrop on the children uh, this was a big news so the challenges are basically uh, there's a large attack surface and widespread deployment uh, there's there are limited device resources today uh, there are lack of standards and regulations. Uh, safety and security processes needs to be integrated. Uh, security by design is not a top priority. So the priority for anybody today, uh, uh, if I say to a large extent, is uh, to push the technology into the market and try to win some early gains and security is being treated as a later, st later step. So uh, that is not by design. So if somebody hacks into it, then people get aware and then they think, oh yeah, I need to go and secure these devices as well. But 
typically, ideally, if we, we, we are all from IT industry, and if you look at uh, the basic philosophy of how we are all going and designing the IT systems, the data centers, security has been built from day one. So similarly in the IoT, uh, the security has to be built from day one. The day it happens, we will see some ease uh, in this particular space. Um, expertise is really one of one of the key key area I want to focus. Uh, not many people are really aware of the IoT security and and what are the different protocols? What are the different ecosystems that we have talked about? The three aspects are there, and how to really go and safeguard all of these three aspects um, in, in, in a single pane of glass. So people may be thinking about securing just the IoT on the edge, or thinking to secure just the IoT at the gateway, or maybe at the cloud security. So how do you integrate all of these three things and secure all of these three remains uh, a very big challenge so that means somebody will have to look at it holistically not by vertical domain um, applying security updates so the the other important thing is say for example if you compare a, a router with a small iot device a router is easy to do security updates because it has got very high processing power it has got an operating system you can actually go and update it but since iot device is very small how do you update it uh, the uh, one option could be over the air, but how do you ensure that um, the over the air update would happen? Uh, the other big challenge is that uh, who needs to own the security of it? Say, for example, I'm a manufacturing, uh, I'm a manufacturer of IoT device. I go and sell that IoT device to a consumer. He goes and takes that to his home. He connects onto his Wi-Fi. Now. My IoT device may be secure and my IoT platform may be secure, but if his Wi Fi system is not secure, somebody got into his Wi Fi and then try and damage that IoT device that I have supplied. So, who's going to be responsible to, uh, or, or against whom the lawsuit would be filed? Would it be to the manufacturer who has built that product or? to the person who has been using this. So again, these are all gray areas at the moment. Uh, the other thing is, say, if, uh, another example, say if I am the manufacturer, I go sell it. And uh, after that, say, uh, I give three years of AMC as part of the initial purchase. Now, what happens after three years? Who is going to take care of the security of that particular system uh, as a consumer? Is he or she going to take the AMC of the IoT security separately? I think these are some of the things that needs to be thought through, which I don't think people have thought through it yet, but these are some of the challenges that, that we see, those are there and those needs to be addressed as you move forward. Um, the other thing is the insecure development and unclear liabilities. So liabilities I've already covered and insecure is also one of the things that when, when when an application or the ecosystem or, or the device itself is getting developed, how do we may, need to make sure that those are developed by security? All right, I'll give you two attack scenarios um, uh, of the IoT. So one, uh, this is the first one, uh, which is basically on based on the Wi-Fi. So this is an attacker who is trying to get onto the Wi-Fi. And the moment he gets onto the Wi-Fi, then after that, um, this person would go and gather the specific information of the network, uh, try to find out uh, the vulnerabilities into the network. The moment uh, the attacker knows that, he'll try to exploit the vulnerability, compromise the network, do the backdoor installation, update the systems with modified firmware, um, I think it is easier for everyone to understand it now based on the solar winds attack that has happened. Uh, otherwise, before solar winds, if I were to explain you, people would still scratch their head as to how this is possible. Uh, but now we, we see that those back backend codes can also be modified by the attacker. So it's easy for all of you to understand. And then uh, once you have done it, uh, you can easily, the attacker will actually go and compromise the device, 
take the remote system and by doing this, uh, the entire IoT devices will be controlled by the attacker. So this is one scenario. Um, the other scenario is uh, botnet, uh, botnet or commands injection based. Um, so uh, this is basically you go to, to a physical port, scan, scan the port, access to the IoT device, do a code and command injection, uh, obtainment of admin privileges, connection to device for CNC, um, then execution of the malicious script, uh, the script deletes itself and runs in memory, uh, spread and attacks over vulnerable devices, and then attack control with the botnet from command and con uh, control center. So this is another scenario, and there could be many more scenarios uh, by which the IoT attacks are possible. The one I showed you by using the laser lights. Um, this is quite interesting. Um, and one of my favorite slides. Um, and if you just go to Shodan, um, Shodan.io, um, just do a Google search, and you'll be surprised the moment you got into Shodan. Uh, this is a real snapshot that I have taken by my search. Uh, if you go and just click on plant there, you will see so many IP addresses of the plants. When I say plants, means these are the uh, IoT or, or connected devices. Those are located inside some of the manufacturing facilities. You'll be surprised that the IP addresses are openly available. Uh, what, what does that mean? So basically, as an attacker, somebody would actually take the IP address, just try to run the vulnerability and and might uh, exploit that so but this is a scaling situation uh, if you look at it uh, this is the world map in us alone so the total result it gave me was 2685 few days back uh, us alone it has 804 germany 515 which lead 220 china 100 russia 83 and then it also tells you the services so services means the manufacturer um, of of this particular devices. So Siemens alone is 108.60 and then the others follows. So uh, and uh, not just that, it also gives you a lot of other information like for example the serial number of the module, the module name, the firmware. So all of these information comes handy just searching a plant there. You're not doing anything else. I mean nobody has done anything. At least I did not do when I uh, looked into it. I just clicked on, I just typed in plant, hit on search, and these are the information that came from Shodan. So a lot of information is available, widely open. Uh, there are a few websites which basically goes and shows you all the IP CCTV cameras, live CCTV cameras, those are available. You go enter, uh, I mean, just click on that, it will show you the live streams of the camera. So. So there has to be, and imagine this is the situation today. When we are talking about moving on to 2025 and increasing the number of IoT devices to a very exploit number, then imagine what kind of situation and what sort of map and the numbers we will have by 2025 or 2030 as, as the penetration goes high. So I think this is definitely a very serious, uh, very serious topic and, and I think uh, a serious work is going on and uh, more and more this needs to be thought through. Okay, um, two more things that are left in this presentation. So one is the real life case study uh, based on this smart factory. In, in the end, I'll give you a few tips. So I've, I've just given you this, uh, this case study. This is uh, basically a smart factory. Uh, if you look at it, uh, in, a, in a factory, there are key processes. So I've listed down a few key processes. I'm not going into the detail, otherwise it, this itself would become a few hours of a presentation. So in, in, the, in the factory or the plant, uh, typically they have got a loading area where the raw material comes and then uh, that gets loaded. Uh, then that material comes into the manufacturing line where the material goes in and the manufacturing start. Once the manufacturing is done, then it goes into the assembly line. 
where the uh, different part of the manufacturing gets assembled. And then from there, it goes into the testing and quality assurance lab uh, where the testing happens and the quality assurance uh, related aspect happens. So once the material is quality uh, certified, then it goes into the packaging area to do the packaging. And then after that, it goes into the warehouse for the dispatch and the actual dispatch process happens from there to either to um, another warehouse or to a distributor and then the material goes to the consumers. So imagine if this is a smart factory and all of these processes are connected by using some machines and those machines are having the IP addresses, those machines are connected onto the network and those machines are accessible uh, within that particular uh, within that particular factory. So what impact it could have if somebody gets onto the factory? I'll just give you two, three examples. Say for example, somebody gets onto the uh, smart factory and after that goes into this section, testing and quality assurance. Or, or uh, and in the testing and quality assurance, uh, say if, um, I'll give you the example, any, any, any example. So any, any device you think about, say for example, you are having a heater. Uh, now the heater is supposed to operate at um, certain temperature. In the quality assurance, what if an attacker goes into it and increase that quality parameter from that temperature to say 30 more degrees Celsius. So that means um, you will still accept the product if it is going to that particular level. Uh, but if that continues for a long time uh, at the consumer home, what if it's burned? So this could have a very serious impact. Uh, the other impact could be, um, say, if you have gotten into the access of uh, this smart factory, what if somebody goes remotely and shut it down? The kind of impact it could have, or if you go fine-tune or, or change some of the parameters in the manufacturing line, um, when the manu in the manufacturing line, if, uh, if the manufacturing, manufacturing uh, is supposed to happen by X parameter, if you add X plus two, then the final product itself will get changed. And imagine if even if this continues for a few days, the type of product that in the end it will have will be very different than what somebody had, to do, uh, had initially thought about it. So, so, uh, this is an example of smart factory um, and in the smart factory i've explained you the processes and in these processes i've just given you a few examples so um, the idea was that uh, i give you this so that you understand what are the sensitivity around the security it has and why it is important to secure each and every element uh, of all the processes here i'll give you a few tips so if let's say somebody is uh, designing a smart factory, so how do you need to make sure that the smart factory is built securely? Um, let me start uh, with the basics. Uh, number one, when you are designing the network for smart factory, you will have to have two different networks in the factory. One for IoT, one for IT and the other is OT or you can say IoT operational technology. So you need to have two different networks so that all the core processes related aspects remains into one network that does not interact with the IT network that you typically have. Then uh, a basic principle, restrict all the ports in OT networks. So all the ports that are connected onto the machines. Um, say for example, if you have um, say 50 ports, out of that 50 ports you only have connected 10 devices, we have to make sure that the remaining 40 ports needs to be disabled. Um, the third is that even though those 10 ports are enabled, those 10 ports needs to be allowed with the MAC address. So say for example, those 10 devices are supposed to connect onto those respective ports. So note down the MAC address of all of those devices and make sure in the network switch goes and allows those specific uh, network MAC address only. If you can implement NAC in the OT network, uh, that will be 
even a superior advantage. Uh, so basically, it will allow you to look at all the possible uh, traffic that is trying to come in. Um, anybody who is trying to gain the uh, unauthorized access, it will number one help you to give you that visibility. Number two, it will also go and control that. So you can implement that. Uh, you can also implement some of the monitoring systems. So some of the advanced SIEM, I won't name any of those, but uh, there are a lot of AI ML based monitoring systems in place, which can actually go and monitor, create the pattern of all the traffic that is happening into that network. And if there is any abnormality happening, say for example, um, in a day between um, these 10 devices are sending say five MB of the traffic to the server. Uh, suddenly, someday, I think this 5 MB becomes 5 GB. So those abnormalities can be detected and send it out. Um, then have a next generation firewall between the IoT, uh, IT and OT network. So uh, there would be some elements, like I said, so these devices will still need to send out the data. And when they send out the data, that uh, data will need to go into the server. That server will be an IT network. So you have to make sure that when you're connecting or when a traffic is going between the IT and OT network, there's a close monitoring and control being put in place by using some of the best firewalls. Um, you should ensure that you are not giving any incoming access to the OT network. Uh, if there is a need, say somebody wants to remotely troubleshoot, that needs to be allowed very strictly by taking all the due diligence approval and for a very limited time. Outgoing access from OT to IT, again, should be on need basis after complete due diligence and the approvals. Um, uh, a next generation SOC, which can actually not just go and monitor your IT, but OT network as well. And make sure all the OT systems that you have uh, are patched regularly. This is a very key element. So say for example, some of these systems that you have, uh, say a robot or some of the PLCs or some of the MES, CARA systems, if if they are not patched properly, while you have done all of these things, but if they are not patched, that means they may have some vulnerabilities. And if somebody gets onto it, it would be easy for uh, anyone to get and, and hack those vulnerabilities so or exploit those vulnerabilities. So make sure, uh, I mean, these are all, while these are all basic, but what I have seen, Based on my experience that people tend to do a lot of great things in the life, but they skip some of the basics. And um, I, I really feel that uh, basics are some of the building stones for anyone, be it, us, be it technology. If you're following the basics, then that will actually help you to build a very strong foundation. All right. Um, yeah, I think that's it from me. Uh, that's a very long lecture that I have given you on the IoT. Um, few last tips that I would like to give you on the personal life um, to be successful. So these are a few tips based on my experience and some of these things I am I use it uh, in my life. So first and foremost, uh, no matter at what age or what level in the career you are at, some people may be at the beginning, some may have gone into the C-suite, uh, but learning is something that one should not stop. So if you are not learning, someone else in the world is learning. And uh, the opportunity comes to the people who are prepared. So you have to make sure that uh, we, are, we are spending some time in our day-to-day -day busy life, but going and spending for the learning. Uh, the second is, uh, if somebody is studying for beach for academic purposes or for attaining some certifications or something, study hard. Um, there, there is no escape to it. There are no excuses to it. Um, as we are seeing uh, today's world, um, this is basically a technology world. Um, and people who, who are well equipped with the technologies that are being day to day, this is the initiation stage. Those are going to be, they will sustain for a very, very long time. So this is the right opportunity for all of us to really go learn all the emerging technologies, which depending on your subject and the interest, uh, please go learn all the emerging technology, be it AI, ML, be it uh, cyber security, be it uh, the network security, whatever stream that you like to, please go and learn. This is really, really mandatory. Um, 
uh, again attain certifications wherever this is applicable in your study pattern or learning pattern go and attain the certifications from the renowned organizations uh, it helps to prove your credentials uh, to the potential employer uh, the next point is be sincere um, so i've seen people who try to be low in life be sincere and they tend to be more successful than the others um, strive for excellence this is one of the very important points so you should not try to try to study because you want to get onto the certification you should not try to study because you want to earn a particular degree or or really want to show off to the world that look hey i have gone and done it look for the excellence so whatever you are studying make sure that you get it 100% make sure that nobody else in the world knows that subject better than you i think that's the simple meaning of excellence and the day you do that rest everything else will follow back on you so i think one should really go and strive for the excellence and then um the last steve job also said i also believe in it uh, live each day as if it was your last so do whatever good good deed that you want to do in that particular day go do uh, all this study go do all the work with honesty and make sure that you are living that day as if really it is your last and i truly believe that if somebody is living a day as if it is the last then in each and every minute that he or she is spending on the life Uh, they would want to give 100%. So the moment person is giving 100% on the work or whatever that they are doing, I think nobody can stop them to be successful. All right, with this, thank you so much. I I know I have taken a lot of time, uh, but I truly appreciate all your patience and and everything. Thanks. Um Kalit, that's it for me. My long lecture is over. <laughs> no 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 i think we were really interested and all of our attendees uh, attendees also have posted a lot of questions for you so yeah it was an interesting session for me too from a very neutral perspective who's not from an it background um yes i would just like to inform all of our attendees uh, the session uh, is in sync with ec council products cnd cnd maps to many roles in the industry like network security engineer network security administrator network security analyst security architect defense technician security operator etc with anyone with the cnd certificate is eligible for more than 135000 plus job vacancies around the globe with an average salary of 85000 plus dollars per annum if you are interested to know more kindly take part in the poll that's been uh, that will be conducted from now on to let us know your preferred mode of training and we will reach out to you i will now uh, read out a few questions for uh, mr safi uh, let's just check what of okay mm. how does hacking in iot happen with the bandwidth range mentioned with the login credentials with centralized management console yeah that's a good question um Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good question. Um, so yeah, in IoT, the hacking can be done uh, in many ways. Like I said, so for example, if, if somebody is having uh, IoT devices at home, and uh, and and if you go and actually penetrate the Wi-Fi device at the home, then that could also be uh, considered as the IoT hack. The other is. say if there is an uh, autonomous car or some of the iot device that we see in our, our practical life in the world uh, those can also be done by using various techniques um, i can't reveal any, any of the technique in this session but yeah there are plenty of techniques those are available um, on the web yeah thanks okay the second one is how can we go for a custom diy iot devices and go for a security any resources recommendation yeah so so as far as iot uh, as far as securing the iot device is concerned so i think there are uh, few elements so one is that when you are looking at securing the iot device you will have to actually go and see how can you secure the firmware of the iot uh, device so that's the number one number two you'll along with the firmware you'll have to look at uh, some ways of 
uh, really going and assigning some of the digital certificate. Uh, so that would actually go and certify that this particular device can only connect and uh, authorized by such and such uh, authorized signatory. Uh, then only that device can be used. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, so once this is secured, then the third thing is, how do you make sure that this is constantly updated? Updated with respect to the current uh, update. So because uh, when we say, when we build the IoT device, this was having X firmware, but if that X, X firmware had some vulnerabilities as, as the world uh, or the time emerges, then uh, those vulnerabilities needs to be patched. So those, Patching process is also very crucial. So um, there's something called OTA, over the air uh, patches update. Uh, that is uh, a common terminology that needs, that, that gets used for uh, patching the IoT devices on the air. I hope that answers the question. Okay, um, the next question is, what would, uh, what would you say are the top 10 IoT security controls? Yeah, so uh, if you were to look at the IoT security controls, so um, remember the three things that I have talked about. Uh, so when we, and, and this is, I think, mistakenly people think about IoT as one, but IoT is not one. IoTs are actually uh, three key uh, components in IoT. One is the IoT, edge which i have just talked about in the previous question these are the controls that people will have to put in uh, the second element for iot is really the gateway in the gateway you will have to look at the controls and controls meaning making sure that nobody has the unauthorized access uh, making sure that the uh, system that gateway is patched making sure that the communication protocol that is being exchanged between the iot device and the gateway is secured um, and then the third element is really the cloud where actually this IoT device is going to be sending the data out. Uh, so again, when we talk about the cloud, in cloud you'll have to make sure that nobody has the unauthorized access, uh, the application that you are building uh, is being secured, uh, then the, uh, the application is being uh, tested. By, by design, you actually go and build the application secure, and once the application is built, you do the vulnerability and penetration testing on it, um, making sure that the communication that is happening between say an application of the IoT device or a communication between the IoT device to the gateway, uh, that also remains uh, secure via the highest level of encryption and everything. Yeah, thanks. Okay, uh, another question is, how can we secure our devices from, uh, from signal, ca uh, signal capture devices? Yeah, so uh, if you were to, yeah, I think that's a good question. For to, to stop or, or to protect your device from the signal capture devices, what you can do is um, you can actually uh, look at different ways of authentication. Um, and, and number two is that uh, you have to really look at the signal range of your IoT device itself. So whatever range that it is supposed to uh, be omitting, it should omit only that range. Uh, otherwise, uh, and, and typically I haven't seen people really go do this level of tweaking. So when, when somebody provisions the IoT device, they really put it to a default range, which in some cases it really goes to a very high, uh, to, to a very, maybe to a next building. We may, have, we may have seen even the Wi-Fi device in one office, the signal gets onto the second or third office as well. So all of these basic design principles needs to be followed. Um, and, and if those are done, I think to, to some extent, those, those can be prevented. Uh, but even then, uh, let's say if somebody is really behind you, security is not 100%, they will get onto it. Uh, but whatever best practices that we have, best controls that we have, I think we should all go and put all of those best controls and the best practices uh, implemented. Yeah, thanks. Okay, there's this last question. Is there any virtual or simulation-based labs for configuring and testing IoT and IIoT devices? Um, 
Well, uh, for that, uh, yeah. So uh, if you look at, uh, I think nowadays, and I'll just um, give a long and short answer to this. Uh, nowadays, if you look at it, uh, learning has become much easier than it used to be in the past. So earlier, I think, say for example, if, if somebody were to appear for a CCNA or CCNP, I'm just giving one example, uh, then somebody will have to really go approach an institute which is having those racks, uh, having those routers and switches in the lab, and then only could go and do the practice. Uh, nowadays, most of these things are virtually available. Uh, when it comes to uh, IoT and the emerging technologies development, uh, those are also available, say, in Azure and, uh, and AWS. Similarly, for the IoT security, uh, the uh, cloud aspect can be easily learned onto the uh, cloud itself. And then, uh, as far as edge is concerned, I haven't heard anything coming in uh, any lab that is there for edge security testing. But as far as the gateway and the uh, gateway in the cloud is concerned, I think those are some of the things that can be easily done onto the AWS and Azure cloud. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Just uh, I think this is the last question, and we would conclude after that how can i start iot learning from the level one okay that's, that's a very good question um yeah so to learn the iot first uh, as you see again i would refer to that diagram that i have shown those are having three key elements uh, the gateway the edge device and the cloud so one will have to really go and understand the network first what do you mean by network what are the key elements in the network so uh, first, go do that, and then second, uh, there are some IoT-specific communication technologies. Say, for example, I'm not sure if you heard LoRaWAN and all. So those can be built it upon uh, on top of the network. Uh, thirdly, uh, you can also then you will have to go and uh, learn some of the cloud technologies. Uh, fourth, uh, once you have done uh, this is the third piece, and then fourth. Uh, you can also go and do some experiments. Say, for example, everybody nowadays have got the smart watches and the uh, and the smart cameras, Alexas, and everything. So you can actually go create a small lab at home only by using the Alexa gateway and then Alexa communicating to to the uh, to the uh, Amazon. So look at all the traffic patterns. Try and uh, try and see how much traffic is being sent out, what all traffic is being sent out. So all of those interceptions can be, uh, you, you can try to do that. Uh, but yeah, begin with the, uh, if you were to start from the basics, begin with the network and then continue to build onto these technologies. Thanks. Okay, so uh, thank you, Mr. Sefi again. Uh, it was really an enlightening session for everyone all of our attendees as well as me personally thank you for joining us um i will now uh say that the session has come to an end uh everyone can disconnect your lines thank you everyone again for joining us thanks everyone i truly really enjoyed this session have a great day <laughs> you care. too Bye -bye. have a great day everyone Bye bye you may now disconnect your lines